CTGP's fourth update of 2024 was just released, which includes four new tracks, two major updates, and three minor updates. The removals for this update are Lumpy's Lively Lair, Sakura Sanctuary, Sky Shrine, and Sunset Forest. In this video, I'm going to walk you guys through the new tracks and the major updates. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this update. Our first new track is Area 64, and what better way to start off the spooky season than with Moo Moo Meadows cows being abducted by aliens on a farm at night. But seriously though, this is a planet that is being taken over by Octumbas, aka those guys in the background over there. You might remember them from Mario Galaxy and whatnot. And you already know the drill, we're just going to be taking a lap of the track before we show off the shortcuts. Since it is spooky month, I had to get in character with Mario in this Halloween costume. I will be sure to link this in the description if you guys want to use this as well. And if I don't, feel free to call me out. We get to go on this UFO for a brief amount of time. We get to like take this interesting platform and then we're immediately off of it and back on the farm grounds again. Honestly, it would have been really cool to be able to go on the UFO for more time. But, you know, just being able to go on the UFO at all is pretty cool. Anyway, time to show off some shortcuts. We got this grass cut at the beginning here, directly in the first set. Honestly, happy that there's a cut before the first set. That way, you don't really have to rely on it right away. After landing from here, you got one more cut. And immediately followed up by yet another cut. And I finally turned on item wheels, so I don't have to worry too much about bagging at first set. So now, what you didn't see lap one is there is another route here. And there are some mushrooms, and I think it's kind of cool that they spin. And there is one more shortcut here. I hope I don't fail it. And there we go. We're able to go over the fence, go through that Octumba over there, and save a little bit of time. So, overall, I think this track is going to be really interesting and competitive because there are a lot of grass shortcuts. Not too much going on towards the beginning of the track. But once you get to this middle section here, you have a lot of shortcuts here. Like, a golden mushroom is going to take you through a decent amount of the grass here, right onto the UFO. And I think you might even be able to chain it if you start goldening at the spiral. You might be able to chain it right at the top of the UFO here. Now, I'm going to show off one more thing that's... They could do a double cut if you shroom off of here. And then maybe, like, shroom here. You can do a little double cut there and save a little bit of time at the end of the track. And that is Area 64. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think it's going to get some banger races online. Going to be some close endings with all those shortcuts. But let's move on to our next track. Our next track is BK Moai Mountain, which comes from Boom Kart Multiplayer Racing. Guys, I have honestly never played this game. So if you guys have played it, let me know down in the comments below if this was a W or an L game. One thing I can really appreciate about this track immediately is just the theming of it. I feel like this color combination is one that we haven't really seen in custom tracks in quite a while. You know, Volcanic Skyway is a very recent example of it, but it just seems like something along the lines of this with the stone heads on the side and even the little Goombas over here. We just haven't really seen that sort of theme going for a while. Also, we're already approaching the end of a lap, 31 seconds without any strats, so let's go ahead and start showing these off. You got this strat right here to skip a turn at the beginning. I don't know how I feel about that strat having item boxes on it because I feel like that's going to be really broken for front running then. Now we have this strat over here. Just go onto this bridge. And now your main shroom strat is going to be going off to the side and then going over this and shrooming through the grass and then arriving at the end of the lap just like that. And we have a 26 second lap with all the strats here. Of course, you can do this beginning strat with a shroom if you want. Don't mind me hitting the tree or whatever it was that I hit. It's all part of the content. It's obviously content purposes. Now, if you don't want to take this bridge, you can actually go around here and then use a shroom to land on this ramp. And then, of course, you can combine both those shortcuts if I wasn't bad at the game. But you get, you get the idea. And just like that, we're at the end of BK Moai Mountain already. This one's going to be a lot of fun and competitive. It's going to be one of those short and crazy tracks. And I always love picking those. So you already know I'm going to be picking this in competitive if I, you know, decide to play that very often. With that being said, though, let's go ahead and move on to our next track. Here we've got Sandy Clock Tower. And looking at the minimap, guys, if, if you guys have been around for a really long time like I have, you may recognize it as a very old track called Desert Tower. For those of you who don't know what that track is, that's probably for the best. But anyway, 
This track was remade for a CT jam, and honestly, I'm just loving the rise of tracks being created from CT jams, because obviously, whenever you make something, you can optimize it to the point where it gets into the pack, and we're seeing that with this track as well. Now, one thing I can really admire about this track is, of course, yet again, the theming, because, you know, there's a lot of themes in CTGP that are just unexplored. I feel like we don't get enough of them, and this is definitely one of those things, you know? You gotta love the sand theme at times, and it's just, you feel like you're missing out when you don't get it, you know? Anyway, you have a beginning shortcut right over there to cut off some dirt. Up next, you have this ramp here. You might have already been able to tell, but you can actually... Well, if I was good, I would have gotten the low trick. But you can low trick on the side of that, save a good amount of time overtaking the ramp regularly. And now we're going to take this tight line here, and we're approaching the part of the track with the most shortcuts. So what I'm going to go ahead and do you, for lap two here, I'm going to show you guys the shroom version of this. Where you can shroom over here, TF strat, and then wheelie off of this part here, and then skip off an insane amount of track. Now, you can do this shroom at the beginning of laps 2 and 3 as well, and save a good amount of time over going on the boost panels. And, I will say, I'm kind of worried about this track in competitive. I feel like it's going to be very dependent on the ending strats, and not so much the beginning stuff going on here. But it is good that the, the last item set before all the cuts is all the way over there and not really right at the cut itself. Now, one thing I will say is that you can do all these ending cuts shroomless. So what I'm going to do here, we can go off of this, do a TF strat. And there is actually a lap 3 strat where you wheelie early and you finish off to the side instead of the main strat. So, I think this one's going to be a bit of a dice roll when it comes to competitive. But maybe it'll play similarly to some other tracks already in the pack. That being said, let's go ahead and move on to our next track. Now we've got Wicked Woods made by Joris. And for those of you who know the, you know, the good old lore, this track was originally designed by Kevin VG207, I believe as part of a CT jam. And that was quite a while ago. So seeing Joris come and restore this track to a state where it can get accepted into CTGP is honestly really cool. And I'm just instantly hitting a wall. But you guys will probably know Joris for his multitude of tracks that are already in the pack, including Desert Fort, Lava Lake, obvious bangers. You know, another one that he worked on with me, Daisy's Palace, you know, one of the best tracks in the pack, no bias. But on to this track. We haven't seen a track with a really, you know, spooky theme in a while. You know, the tracks that come to mind for me are Haunted Garden, Stump Bump Forest. But you don't really see those tracks being a part of the CT meta. I feel like this has a chance of making its way into the mainstream meta just because of how much there is going on at the beginning and the abundance of shortcuts that you have at the end of the track. So obviously that's one regular route, or one regular lap, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the optimal routes. You want to go to the right at the beginning here and you can see these arrows. You're going to want to go ahead and go off the arrows right there and then align for this turn right here. And honestly, these turns are really insane. This beginning section is going to be honestly very crazy just because of how much room you have to interact with players and the roads are just kind of narrow as well so it's an even tighter race so the main shroom cut is going to be right there just through that mud section and i think that's the only single shroom shortcut that you guys are going to have to worry about but towards the very end of the track here as you'll see we have a little bit more to cut off and i don't know how much I okay that's a cool blooper but i don't know how much i like the theme of you know a lot of grass cuts towards the end because you saw two shrooms being used right there and one more shroom to cut off that final turn so that being said in terms of how this track will play in competitive i feel like this is going to be a little bit more interesting than the previous two or the previous three tracks so far just because you have a beginning section that is so interaction based so like so can i don't know congested if that's the right word because you, you, there's not a lot of room for you to move around. You're kind of forced to interact with the racetrack, and you're going to be forced to interact with all the other players on the racetrack as well. So the beginnings of races are going to be really important on this one. And one thing I'm really happy about, that item set that we just passed, that's probably going to be where you're chaining to get an item for the cut at the very end because there's no other item set until the middle of the shortcuts over here. So you're going to want to like grab an item right over here. And at this point, the only thing you can really cut off at the end of races is this last turn right here other than that i think this is a very inter interesting track it's nice to have a lot of halloween like decorations all around it and i think it's gonna be i don't know if it'll be the most popular but i do hope it gets picked a lot in competitive because 
there is a lot of front running elements and a lot of luck elements to it at the same time. But anyway, that is the end of the brand new tracks for this update, so let's move on to the major updates. Our first major update is DS Waluigi Pinball. While the visuals may not look very different, this is actually a completely different version than the previous one. And I don't remember who the author of the previous one is, I'm really sorry, but you'll see the authors for this one in the description down below. Now, I don't think there's too much to say about this track, but these item boxes that are sitting really wide are kind of interesting because to get a box at the beginning in an optimal line is one thing, but if you don't get a box in an optimal line, you have to go pretty wide onto the boost panels to get one. One major change is that that detach is guaranteed now, but that slip that you just saw right there is kind of new. Now, one other thing I'm kind of thinking about, those pinballs. Y'all can let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I genuinely feel like those pinballs move slower than the previous version. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not, but they just feel slower. Now, a little bit of backstory with this track actually. They did run a poll in the track tester server a little while ago to see if there, there would be some shortcuts. So, as you can see on the left here, you have these bumpers. I'm not sure if there's still if it's the same as the version I played previously, but in a previous version, the tops of those bumpers were mushrooms, and you can actually use them to cut off a decent amount of that beginning section. And if I remember correctly, again, I think a lot of people deemed that as problematic, and we just and they just decided not to keep those shortcuts in this version. And it's even funnier because an even older version of this track had a pretty big shortcut that you had to use at least one or two mushrooms for to cut off that beginning. Also, I'm sorry I'm just shrooming through this middle section. I don't want to deal with I don't want to deal with the pinballs and all the rehopping. But as for how this is gonna play, I think this is gonna be exactly the same. I mean, you can't really do any of the shortcuts. Like if I go ahead and try one, like if I just go over here, I believe yeah you have an invisible wall so you're not even allowed to cut off that part if you wanted to. Those pinballs are still as scary as ever. Like Especially at the beginning with not a lot of room to move around, you might be forcing yourself to go for a box while taking a safe line avoiding the pinball. I don't know, maybe that'll be an interesting strategy to make sure you don't get hit early in the race. But, of course this late stage of the race is going to be exactly the same, you just don't want to get hit by a pinball, but it looks even... Why do I say anything? I was about to say, it looks even easier to avoid them until I got completely bamboozled by one. But anyway, there wasn't really too much going on with this track. It looks pretty similar to what we current, what we just had in the previous CTGP update. But let me know what you guys think. I think that's going to be really fun. It looks visually stunning as expected with Waluigi Pinball. But that's all for that one. So let's move on to our final track of the video. For our final track and final major update, we have Inferni Umbra, also known as Infernal Pipeyard. Now, for those of you who have been around, or who don't know much about this track, Infernal Pipeyard has been in the pack since 2015. Like a really, really old version of CTGP, and it looks really outdated. So this retexture, well, remodel and retexture, is breathing some new life into it, and I always like seeing these tracks restored. In one way, it kind of reminds me of Candy Coaster, because Candy Coaster was another track that has been in the pack for ages, was remade by the author, and is continuing to stay in the pack, now let's actually talk about this track a little bit more. The main things that are made to this track are some quality of life changes. As you can see right there, that low trick is way better indicated. And I think this transition looks a lot cooler now. Another slight thing that you might not know, the edges of the track. In the previous version, the walls were extending all the way to the floor. And that would sometimes cause problems when you were falling off the track. Because you would fall off, but you wouldn't be counted out of bounds if you were actually touching the wall. So without those walls going all the way to the floor, that's going to remove that problem of like, you know, staying on the track a lot longer than you actually should. So that first shortcut is obviously still there. As for the second shortcut, it is also still here and the fire pillar was actually moved a little bit further away. So you're at much less risk of hitting the fire pillar among landing. Oh, I gotta say this tunnel looks pretty sick, but I know, I know some people have like complained about the visuals for this being a little bit too much on the eyes. I honestly don't see it. I think it looks sick because, you know, the old version I already thought was a really cool track, but this is like a completely like different thing I'm looking at. It gives it a completely different vibe to just look at because 
the old version of Infernal Pipe Yard, I, I kind of got used to, you know, it, it, it just, it just looks old, you don't really, you know, treat it the same way you treat modern tracks, but the visuals on this one are now on par with all the modern tracks we're seeing, and it's still going to be as entertaining of a track as it always has been in competitive MKW, because this has been a staple in the CT community for so long. And I really hope it continues to get picked very often because this is honestly one of my favorite CTs that are currently in the pack. And also one thing I didn't point out, these mushrooms, they fit so much better with the theme. I don't know why. I was just never really a fan of, you know, the green mushrooms with like the net middles. Like it just looked really off compared to the rest of the track. Also, let me just admire this scenery. Like, like what, like I'm looking at something absolutely insane. And then look at this. You have like a dragon's head or something that you're like low tricking into. Like, dude, there is just so much to look at on this track while racing. And it's kind of difficult to take it all in. But it, I just can't get over how good this track looks and like how much longer we're going to be able to keep this track in the pack now thanks to this reskin. So as we're approaching the final turns of this update, this is obviously the very last track. So let me know down in the comments down below what you think about this update. Is this a W? Is this an L overall? But that is the end of Inferni Umbra. Thank you guys so much for watching this update. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.